Hi guys, Todd here. Today we're going to be having a look at the Alcatraz RDA by Hayes. Now this is a this is actually very different to what else is on the market just now. It's 99 euros and you can get it on the Phileas Cloud website. Yes, Phileas Cloud. I always say Phileas Fog and I know it drives them crazy, so I'll get it right for once. And the link will be in the description if you want to go along and check it out. They do state in the description that they're big fans of Norbert and um, yeah, you can kind of see that in the design of this thing. Uh, it's for vertical coils, a uh, single vertical coil and it's different. Close ups. When this arrives it's going to come in a little tin like this and I'm not sure where the connection is. Maybe somebody can explain that but uh, yeah it's called Alcatraz. Inside you'll find some spare o-rings and a couple of terminal screws here as well. I will point out that there is no regular 510 pin, this is a squonking atty only. So we'll start with the drip tip. It's an Ultim one and it's quite a narrow bore there and it's regular 510 and I've had zero issues putting other 510 drip tips onto this atty. The top cap is, it's not highly polished or anything like that, um, it, it's got like a matte shine to it and we have one, two, three air holes going on here. It's got a little bit of a dome going on at the top there and nothing exciting going on here at all. You do however get this piece that sits inside the top cap and that then sits inside the deck. So basically what happens is you put your coil in and then you take this piece, you can see that this Ultim piece here has, you know, a larger piece and a smaller piece and the same for the deck. So you just take this and you just pop it in there like so. And that instantly reduces the chamber down to a very, very small condensed size. So just to show you, you can see there are three air holes going on, but if I take the Allen key here and I pop that through, so this is what's happening. You see how that's coming out at an angle at the bottom there? Same for this one here. And same on the other side there. So all three are angled down towards the base of the chamber. And hopefully this is what is going to give us some decent flavour from this atty. Now I'm waiting on confirmation from exactly what this material is. Um, if it's brass then I've been using this, I had this since before Christmas I think it was, and I've been running thick gunky custards through this day in day out, and those posts are still sparkly clean. Uh, I've not cleaned them in any shape or form, but they don't patina, they don't get dirty, they just stay as they are. On the base we have Alcatraz, and we have the Hayes logo here, and we have a serial number. And you can see that we've got, and this looks like it's brass once again, and we've got a little squonking hole going up through there. Trapping your wires is very simple. You know, you're just going to unscrew these here, and you've got your negative here, and you can see that you've got plenty of space there to get a coil underneath there. Now you can get quite rowdy coils in there, or quite rowdy for me. Uh, I've had a 0 0.3 ohm coil in there, a fuse clapped in, and no issues with running it at all. Now just to point out, I mean, the space you have across here, I mean, that's just under 8 mils. That's what the space is there. So you, like I say, you can get chunkier coils in there than you would expect for an atty like this. But for this, I've put in a narrow Clapton coil and it's 2.5 millimetres in a diameter. And hopefully you can see that that's just sitting in there quite the thing. Now you'll see there that when you build it, you're, you're almost building it off center if you like. See that's it straight on, it's kind of off like that a bit because of the, the two wells here but that's my coil in so we'll get some cotton in this thing now and putting the cotton in is a bit of a pain in the ass. So what I tend to do is get my cotton and just pass it down through the coil so it's sitting like that. I then grab my tweezers and then just start pulling it down a little bit at a time. Then it's going to pop out like that. Actually putting the atty on something makes this bit a bit easier. You just grab my cotton there normally and I just push down and that saves me going fishing for the cotton if you like. Just pushing down, pulling the excess out, 
push down, pull the excess out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to snip it off there, snip it off up at the top. So we've got something like that. I'm going to fluff this out a bit and then just poke it back down into here. Now you've got to remember that on the, the Ultum piece, remember these ta the tabs here, see the tabs? They're going to poke down. So you can't, you know, put too much cotton in here because those tabs are going to push the cotton down anyway. Now I've tried different ways of doing this. Now the danger is, is that if you put too much cotton in here, then you are going to block off the squonk hole that is sitting right down by it's right down below the coil so i've just found it easier for me just to take the cotton into the big well and just leave it there what you can do if you want is just grab another piece of cotton and then just poke that down but then you have to make sure that it's running across to meet up with this well of cotton but you also have to make sure that it's not blocking off that squonk hole. Uh, it's quite a tricky thing to make sure that you're getting it right, but you can do it. Poke that down into the well, and I'm just taking my tweezer and I'm just going right underneath that coil and making sure that I can feel that squonk hole. Just make sure that it's not blocked off. Just pop a little bit of juice round about this just now. Grab my Ultum piece, make sure that the big tab is going over the big hole and boom, down she goes. Then you just take your top cap and this is one of my least favourite things about this Atti, it's actually lining up the air holes uh, because when you're using this on a daily basis it's, it's hard to see when the air holes are open or closed. You actually have to almost like take the top cap off, line them up and then push it back down. And just in case I didn't mention this already, this is 22 millimeters in diameter by about 22 millimeters in height, not including the 510 and the drip tip. Now, just to show you the squonking action, so if I squeeze away here, see the juice coming up there, and it's distributing across both channels quite the thing. I told you it was a different one. It's it's strange. It's it's unlike anything else that I've used in quite some time, and. In some respects, I do like it for being different, and I also like that it does, in some ways, pay homage to you know Norb uh, or Norbert because uh, his gear was amazing. Things I don't like, uh, right? I don't like the Ultum drip tip. I mean, that's me got a uh, Cyan Mods drip tip on there, and instantly I think it just looks so much better. For me, I like it because it's actually quite a it's quite an old school looking at it. Um, th there's no bells and whistles looking at it. It's quite plain and, and I like it because of that. And plus it's 22, which suits me just fine. It doesn't come with a standard 510 pin, which yes, it's a squonking at it. It's been sold as a squonking at it, but um, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll say that's a con even though it's been sold as one specific thing. It's it's still a bit of a con. The other thing that I have to mention is, as a con has to be the airflow and, and getting it lined up. Now I have one air slot open just now, going right down into that chamber and hitting that coil and looking at it here just now, haven't a clue. Not a clue, can't, can't see which air hole it is that's open, uh, it, it's just, if I zoom in on that there just now, it's it's near impossible to tell which one is actually open and which one you would be adjusting. You do have to take the top cap off to make those adjustments and, and that's something I'm never a fan of and so for me that's going to be another negative. Things that I think you should be aware of, uh, you have to be oh so careful when you're pulling that cotton down into the chamber. You can't block that little squonk hole off. If you block it off, you, or just partially block it off, you can end up sending juice just one way instead of both ways. Uh, but in saying that, when I first got this, I was just running it with cotton only in the big chamber and nothing in the little chamber. And it worked fine. Um, but I do prefer to just put a little bit of cotton in the small chamber and just push it through and, and it just works better. 
it wicks better in that you, you know, you're going to have more juice in there so you can vape longer without squonking. Watch out for blocking that hole. If you do block that hole, you will find that you'll get gurgling from this and that's because you're pushing juice into the chamber. You're not pulling all the excess back out. It's getting stuck in there because of the cotton blocking off the squonk hole. So if you do have that issue, if it's gurgling, you now know what's causing it. The screws, you know, the positive and negative blocks and whatnot are brass. Now, I cannot confirm if they are lead free brass. I, I don't know and I can't get that information. I wish I could say for a fact that it is lead free brass. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say yes. And that's just purely based on the fact that after several weeks, that is still spotlessly clean. Now, my experience over the years is that with cheap quality brass, when I vape in it with custard, it tarnishes, it gets dirty and very, very quickly. And it's just like alarm bells going off in my head. This doesn't. So I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's lead free brass, but I cannot confirm it is. And I know that that will put some people off. Now for the positives, you can put little two, two and a half mil coils in here. You can put three, three and a half mil coils in here. It's, it's quite forgiving on the whole coil front. I mean, like I said, I've had a 0 0.3 ohm uh, fuse clapton in here, three millimeter inner diameter, giving it power and all the air holes open and it performs really well. Or you can just do what I've done here, you know, put in a little thin clapton coil, two and a half millimeter inner diameter, I mean, this is actually, this is a one ohm coil. I've got one air hole open only, and it's, it's a mouth to lung. By modern standards, today's standards, it's mouth to lung. To old school, you know, vapors, you know, that are, are used to like 0 0.8 mil draws and things like that, it's not as tight as that. But it, I would say it is, a slightly open mouth to lung draw with just one air hole open. I'm getting good flavour from this. It, I do like the flavour from this quite a lot. Now, if I want to adjust it, then I have to take the top cap off. I have to find the holes, which is not the easiest thing to do because it's, it's ultim and then line up the air holes and then pop this back down. Don't like doing that, but now it's now it's a restricted direct lung. And when I say restricted, it's tight. It's a tight direct lung draw. Bumping the wattage up a little bit in this and... It's very good. I do like this. It's, it's different. It's not the easiest thing to... This isn't... How do I say this without offending people? If you've used older atties like the Origin and Norbert stuff in the past, you know, this is a doddle. You can throw any coil in here, no problem at all. It's a bit of a hassle getting the cotton through and distributed, but it's pretty straightforward. If you're coming to this fresh from the current atties that are on the market, there is a learning curve. It will take you some time and by that, I mean it'll take you two or three builds before you nail it and get comfortable with using this. It's not something you can just dive into and pick up straight away. So once again, that might be a bit of a con for some people. For old farts like me, it's not a problem. I mean, that custard that I'm vaping, I mean, that's goose juice as usual. Uh, that's tasting exactly as it should do at its best. So love the flavour. I like the adjustment in the draw that you can go down to an, an open mouth to lung, to a restricted direct lung. I like it. I do like this. It's it's going to be a, a bit of a Marmite one for a lot of people. I do think it's something worth giving a go. I don't think it's going to be for everybody, but for me it suits the way I like to vape and I like the flavour and, and that's just tick, tick, tick as far as I'm concerned. So. There are some negatives, there's more positives, but hopefully this kind of covers the basis for you. I'm not sure what other reviews are out there for this, I've not checked, but um, there's a, a Hayes 
Facebook group. You can go along and you'll find hints and tips and builds and things in there. Listen, thank you to the guys for sending this on and to you as always, thank you for watching. And until next time, bye for now. Over to the side here, I'll put a link to a couple of atties that are vaguely similar, a bit more in the restricted draw. You can click on the subscribe button down below. And as always, thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time.